All right, let's jump right in. Today, we're going to take a hard look at what could be the most significant AI launch for tech leaders this year, OpenAI's GPT-5. We're going to break down the tech, what it means for the business, and the strategy you'll need to really get ahead of the curve. So let's just cut to the chase. If there's one single number you need to know about GPT-5, it's this, 75%. And believe me, this isn't just some small step up. It's a fundamental change in what AI can actually do in the world of software engineering. So what does that 75% really mean? Well, on a benchmark that uses actual real-world software bugs from open source projects, GPT-5 can solve three out of every four problems it's given. That is a massive jump from GPT-4, which could only handle about half of them. You know, this is the difference between having a helpful little tool and having a reliable collaborator you can actually count on. So you have to ask, what's under the hood that's driving this kind of generational leap? Well, it really comes down to two major upgrades in its architecture that completely changed the game. First up is its memory, or what the engineers call the context window. Honestly, the easiest way to think about it is just as the AI's short-term memory. The bigger that memory, the more complex a project it can get its head around without getting lost or forgetting what you told it 10 minutes ago. And GPT-5's context window is, well, it's enormous. We're talking 400,000 tokens. That's something like 12 times larger than even the biggest version of GPT-4. What this really means is that it can absorb and reason about an entire code repository all at once. That completely transforms its ability to handle massive tasks, like refactoring an entire system, or digging into a really tricky bug that weaves through multiple files. And look, this is not just a number on a spec sheet. It directly translates into a much better experience. An early user put it perfectly, saying the big difference is that context awareness. The model just, it doesn't lose track as easily, even when you're deep in a complex coding session. Okay, so the second big change is what's called a mixture of experts architecture. Now, instead of one giant model trying to do absolutely everything, GPT-5 is built more like a team of specialists. There's an intelligent router that looks at your request and sends it to the best expert for that specific job. Maybe it's a really fast one for simple things or a super powerful one for a nasty bug. So let's translate all this technical jargon into what really matters tangible business value. How does all this affect your bottom line? Now, here's the part that's really fascinating. GPT-5 isn't just smarter, it's actually more efficient. It gets better results while using 22% fewer tokens and making 45% fewer tool calls. So put simply, it thinks more before it acts and that saves both time and, you guessed it, money. And that efficiency, that has a direct impact on the bottom line. Fewer tokens, faster responses, it means lower API costs, and it means faster development cycles. It's really a classic win-win. You get better, you get faster, and you get cheaper. When you put all these gains together, they create this really powerful triple threat value proposition. You get efficiency, which means faster time to market and lower costs. You get quality, with fewer bugs making it into production and reduced security risks. And you get productivity, because it frees up your best developers to focus on high-value innovation instead of all the grunt work. And a huge piece of that quality puzzle is trust. With a reported 80% reduction in those weird errors or hallucinations, developers can finally have a lot more confidence in the code that GPT-5 is producing. That reliability, that's the key to real-world adoption and impact. The potential is crystal clear. But how do you actually put this power to work in your organization? Adopting a tool this transformative, well, it requires a deliberate strategy and a really clear-eyed view of the challenges you're gonna face. So here's a simple five-step playbook for any executive who's looking to lead this charge. You start small with pilot projects to prove the value. Then you engage vendors on security and privacy. From there, you draft policies so everybody's on the same page. Then you invest in training to build the right skills and culture. And finally, you monitor and iterate, track your metrics, and then refine your strategy as you go. And the rewards here are very real. Early enterprise adopters, like the pharmaceutical giant Amgen, are already confirming these exact benefits. They're reporting improvements across the board in accuracy, reliability, and speed. Of course, this isn't a magic bullet. 
leaders have to be pragmatic and manage some very real challenges, things like data privacy, IP security, integration costs, navigating all that legacy code. And maybe most importantly, this doesn't get rid of the need for human oversight, it just shifts it. You're going to need to invest in evolving your team's skills for this new reality. All right, for our final section, let's zoom out. Let's look beyond just today. Where is this technology ultimately headed? And what does it mean for the very future of how we build software? We are on a very clear evolutionary path. Right now, today, AI is a pair programmer. It helps and it suggests things. In the near future, though, it's going to become more of a project executioner autonomously completing entire features. And the ultimate vision, the end game, is software on demand, where you can generate entire applications just from simple, high-level descriptions. And this brings us to the final, crucial question. This transition from AI assistant to autonomous agents is already happening. So for leaders, the question is no longer if you're going to adopt this technology. The real question is, how you are going to lead your teams in an era where software increasingly can build itself. Thank you for joining the podcast and see you soon.